Section 7.2 is on standard units and areas under the standard, standard normal distribution. Let's say we wanted to compare the change in price of a new car to the price of a gallon of milk. Both prices are normally distributed, however, the mean price will be substantially different. The mean price of a new car is about $20,000 and the mean price of a gallon of milk is about $4. So the purpose of these scores are to standardize normal distributions to compare a value in one normal distribution with a value in another different normal distribution. Example 2 conceptually explains the need for standardized Z scores. Suppose Tina and Jack are in two different sections of the same course. Each section is quite large and the scores on the midterm exams of each section follow a normal distribution. In Tina's section, the average or the mean was 64 and her score was 74. In Jack's section, the mean was 72 and his score was 82. Who did better with respect to the other students in the section? Visually, Tina's 74 was higher than most of the other scores in her section, while Jack's 82 is only an upper middle score in his section. Tina's score is far better with respect to her class than Jack's score is with respect to his class. However, we need to look at this statistically, and to do that, we need to calculate the standardized z-score. The z-value, or z-score, gives the number of standard deviations between the original measurement x and the mean mu of the x distribution. Here, z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. Given an x distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, the raw score x corresponding to a z-score is x equals z times sigma plus mu. As you can see, these formulas can be used interchangeably. The z-score just isolates the z-value, and the x-score isolates the x-value. Example 3 allows us to use the z-score formula. A pizza parlor franchise specifies that the average mean amount of cheese on a large pizza should be 8 ounces and the standard deviation only 0.5 ounce. An inspector picks out a large pizza at random in one of the pizza parlors and finds that it is made with 6.9 ounces of cheese. Assume that the amount of cheese on a pizza follows a normal distribution. If the amount of cheese is below the mean by more than three standard deviations, the parlor will be in danger of losing its franchise. How many standard deviations from the mean is 6.9? Is the pizza parlor in danger of losing its franchise? The solution is as follows. Since we want to know the number of standard deviations from the mean, we want to convert 6.9 to standard z units. So using the z-score formula, we substitute in 6.9 for the x value, 8 for mu, and 0.5 for sigma. Doing the math, we get a negative 2.2 for our z units. So in conclusion, since the quantity of standard deviations is only negative 2.2, which is less than three standard deviations, the pizza parlor is not in danger of losing its franchise. Standard units need a standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is a normal distribution with mean mu equals zero and standard deviation sigma equals 1, as shown in the figure below. The standard normal 
The characteristics of the standard normal distribution include, first, the area under the curve equals 1, second, the distribution is symmetrical, and third, the left tail style table gives cumulative areas for the left of a specified Z. Example 3a shows us how to use the standard normal distribution table in the back of the book. Let's say we want to find the area under the standard normal curve to the left of z equals negative 1.00. Our step one is to draw the area under the curve so we know what we're looking for. Step two is to look up the z-score probability. And this is the probability of z less than or equal to negative 1, which equals 0 0.1587. This normal distribution table is found in the appendix in the back of the book. Example 3b provides another example for using the standard normal distribution in the back of the book. Let's say we want to find the area to the left of z equals 1.18. Step 1, we draw the area under the curve, just so we know what we're looking at. Step 2, we look up the z-score probability. And this is where z less than or equal to 1.18 equals 0 0.8810. Example 4a, let's say we want to find the area between z equals 1 and z equals 2.70. First, we draw the area under the curve. Second, we look up the z-score probabilities and calculate the area. To calculate the area, we take the upper, the probability of the upper, z less than or equal 2.70, subtract the probability of the lower range z less than or equal to 1.00. Finding those properties, the probabilities in the back of the book, the resulting answer is 0 0.1552. Another example, 4b, find the area to the right of z equals 0 0.94. First, we draw the area under the curve, so the area that we're looking for, Second, we look up the z-score probabilities and calculate the area. In this example, because we're looking for the area to the right, whatever the probability is, we're going to subtract from 1. So we get an answer of 0 0.1736. So this is the procedure and summary of how to use the left tail style standard normal distribution table. There's three types of problems we might have. First, for areas to the left of a specified z-value, use the table entry directly. Second, for areas to the right of a specified z-value, look up the table entry for z and subtract the area from 1. As a note, another way to find the same area is to use the symmetry of the normal curve and look up the table entry for a negative z. The last type of problem for areas between two z values, z1 and z2, where z2 is greater than z1, subtract the table area for z1 from the table area for z2. Lastly, anything less than negative 3.49 can be treated as zero, and any z value greater than 3.49 can be treated as one.